the array command is found here on the ribbon. And when you click on the button, you see the two types of arrays that NanoCAD can create. Ones that are rectangular and ones that are polar or circular. An array consists of evenly spaced copies of, of one or more objects. So here we have a circle and then I've applied the array rectangular command to create this rectangular array. You can see it's made of rows and columns. You can specify the number of rows and columns individually as well as the spacing between rows and columns. And you can have rectangular arrays at an angle. The other kind of array is the polar array. And this distributes the objects in a circle around a center point. There you have the option of rotating or not rotating the objects being arrayed so they either face the center or keep their original orientation. You might notice here that the polar array does not seem centered on the center point which is that gray dot in the middle. That's because NanoCAD uses a default point on each kind of object to determine its distance from the center point. You can specify a specific point on the object or else use this table to determine where the default point will be. For the polyline rectangle it was at the starting point. Let's now try using the array command. So come up here to the toolbar, click on array and then here is this dialog box for polar arrays and click on the other radio button for rectangular arrays. The first thing we want to do is select the objects. So click this button, choose the rectangle, press enter to return to the dialog box. So you can see you can specify a number of rows and columns and over here in the preview window it'll show you a rough idea what it'll look like. So I'll put in say six rows, four columns, these sorts of numbers of offsets. However, you can also click this button to show the offset you would like. NanoCAD figures it out for you. I'll have an angle of zero. So here we can see our rows and columns. Because the row and column offsets are positive numbers, the array will grow from the selected object, which is in the lower left corner. Click OK, and there's the array. Let's look at some more options in the array dialog box. I'd mentioned that because the offset numbers are positive, the array grows up and to the right. If we instead put in negative numbers, it grows down and to the left. And then we can put in an angle for the array, such as 45 degrees, and that too is reflected in the preview. The nice thing about the dialog box, NanoCAD remembers your setting for the next time you go to use it. The only thing it doesn't remember is the objects you've selected. Select the objects, then click OK. Here the array grew down and to the left at the angle you specified. The polar array is in the other half of the dialog box. So I've clicked the radio button and again first thing you do is select the object. So I'm going to select that rectangle again, press enter. And the second thing NanoCAD is looking for is the center point. And I'm going to choose this dot right here using the node entity snap. So we have our center point and that's where the array is going to rotate around. Now there's different ways of specifying it. Let's just consider the first one, which is the default. We can have 10 items and let's fill 270 degrees. Meanwhile, in the preview window, you're starting to be able to see what the result will look like. Here's the option I talked about earlier, whether the items are rotated as they go around the circle. Right now it's turned off. When I turn it on, you can see the change in the preview window. When you click more, you get to the area where you can tell NanoCAD how to determine from where to measure the entity to that center point. Right now we have it set to the object's default, which if you recall, is the first point on the polyline rectangle. All right, with everything set, let's click OK and see what happens. So there is our three quarters of a circle starting here. And recall that NanoCAD circles are measured positively counterclockwise and so the bars end here. Put in a negative angle and that will cause it to rotate in a different direction and we won't rotate the items as copied this time. Again I have to select the object to be copied, press enter and click OK. So here is the original object 
and the circle goes around clockwise because the angle was negative and this time the entities are not rotated. Recall that the distance from the center point to each entity is this corner here which is where the polyline first began to be drawn. Mm -hmm.